Welcome to the Jobnik. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman. Today is Thursday, the 11th of April, 2024, day 188 of the October 7th war. 188 days on, our determination to achieve our war aims remains focused to bring home all our 133 hostages. Mothers, fathers, our sons, our daughters, all of them need to be brought home now to destroy Hamas and to ensure that at Gaza never becomes a threat to us ever again. I want to uh, update you on a few uh, items. First, an update from COGAT, which coordinates and facilitates humanitarian aid entering Gaza. Look, the facts don't lie. Our work to transfer hundreds of trucks containing food, medical supplies and humanitarian aid to Gazans is growing and continuing at a pace. In six months, we have sent 22,000 trucks, more than 400,000 tons of aid, 3,961 food packages have been airdropped in 64 airdrops through Kerem Shalom and the Nitsana crossings. And now I can share with you that we are constructing a new crossing in northern Gaza to get more aid in where there are challenges in the north. The cabinet has agreed to these measures together with opening up the port of Ashdod to bring in aid. So with the Jordanian crossings, uh, with a capacity of 50 trucks, we are working to bring the number of trucks up from 350 currently to 500 a day. That means more food, more water, and more medical supplies and shelter. Now to the latest figures in the last 24 hours. Yesterday, just yesterday, Wednesday, 298 humanitarian trucks went in, 353 Food packages were airdropped. 28 trucks of humanitarian aid were sent to northern Gaza. So by land, air and sea, in accordance with international law, aid is getting in. On water, the IDF have repaired the Bani Suhala uh, water line. The line will serve more than 400,000 people. That's 400,000 people in central Gaza with an additional 42 litres of high quality water every single day. But of course, the UNRWA published figures will say otherwise. So even though over the last four days, 1,500 trucks, 1,500 trucks have gone in, the UNRWA dash dashboard shows a much lower figure. Look, I think the world is slowly waking up to the UN's logistical failures. The latest ruse is that the UN only counts the trucks they pick up. Look, right now, there are 500 trucks worth of aid, 500 trucks worth of aid sitting and waiting on the Gazan side of Kerem, Kerem Shalom. 500 trucks worth of aid languishing in a parking lot waiting to be picked up by UN agencies. Look, it's long past time now for the UN to focus its energy on feeding Gazans rather than maligning Israel. I wanna make this quite clear. We're saying to the UN, do your job, focus on distribution and stop blaming Israel for your huge failures. And as usual, uh, the daily 2 a, 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. IDF humanitarian pause in Rafa will enable movement of humanitarian aid. Now I want to update you on the latest from the IDF's work to uproot Hamas from Gaza. In central Gaza, we began a precise intelligence-based operation to target and eliminate terrorists using aircraft and the Navy we hit terror infrastructure above and below the ground. An armed terrorist who exited a terror tunnel next to our troops was eliminated together with launchers. Our Navy has been assisting our ground troops 
in the area. And lastly, to the north of Israel, our fighter jets are striking military compounds in Aita Ash Shab, in Khiam, in southern Lebanon, and in Nikura. So that's the end of the briefing today. I will now take your questions, which you should put in the chat uh, with your news outlet. So you have a question from Jay Rubin. Uh, sorry, you have a question from Hannah Julian. Has Hamas provided Israel or Qatar, Egypt or the US any evidence as to the, whether the hostages are still alive? Thank, Thank you, you very much for that question, Hannah, uh, about the hostages and whether or not they are alive. Look, I, I think it's very important that we're dealing uh, to, uh, to remember that we're dealing with a genocidal uh, terrorist um, organization. Uh, Hamas, of course, um, have many spokespeople. Not all of them are well connected. Uh, so we should treat Hamas's comments extremely skeptically. Hus um, hostage negotiations are always sensitive and challenging, but we are committed. We know that the results of international pressure on Israel uh, are helping, actually helping Hamas. It's emboldening them and making them walk away. We want our people back as soon as possible. We know that dozens and dozens of them and dozens of them are alive and we need them back. We need all of them back, all 133 of them back. So uh, with that, we'll go to the uh, next question, please. You have a question from Jim Williams of Zaker International News. He asks you, uh, this week, the Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin testified before the U.S. Senate and told them that he saw no evidence that Israel was committing genocide in their war against Hamas. Does the PM think Austin's testimony will help get the truth thru out on the baseless claims of genocide? Thank you, Jim, uh, for that question. Uh, look, uh, we've dealt with this question of genocide so many times. Uh, ultimately, we uh, believe that the truth uh, will come out. There is, of course... Uh, no such thing uh, happening here. It's in uh, Hamas's interest to uh, play this uh, libel and for it to be picked up. This is one of their key, um, uh, the, the, the key uh, tools in the armory of uh, Hamas to, to uh, maximize the number of figures. But the figures uh, have been released on the sixth month uh, anniversary of this war, and they are quite clear. We know that 13,000 13, terrorists have been killed. Recording in uh, progress. We know that about the uh, same number have been uh, apprehended, uh, arrested, um, injured. So taken off the battlefield, that's at least 26,000 people which we've taken off of Hamas terrorists and Islamic Jihad as well, taken off the battlefield. Uh, I think when the dust settles, and I think this has been... Uh, said again and again, uh, uh, Secretary of State Austin said it, but also General Petraeus and, of course, John uh, Spencer at the um, Urban Warfare Studies uh, head at uh, West Point said the same thing, that we have set the gold standard, the gold standard when it comes to minimising um, the effect of our war against Hamas on civilians. Hamas, of course, are trying to maximise the number of civilian casualties, and we know that that's, that's been their tactic, but it's very important for people not to fall for it. When the dust settles, it will be absolutely clear that we have killed the least number of civilians in any urban conflict ever in the history of armed warfare. Um, of course, every civilian casualty is a, uh, a tragedy. and But of course, none of this would have happened if the October 7th massacre um, uh, wouldn't have happened. So... Every civilian casualty, in fact, every casualty in this entire war uh, lands firmly at the feet of Hamas. Uh, any other questions? There's a question from the Washington Post. They ask, is the new Norton crossing that's opening in place of the Ezra crossing? So, um, of course, the, the the crossing at the north was a pedestrian uh, crossing. The Ares crossing at the north of Gaza was a pedestrian crossing, uh, which was uh, attacked and destroyed by Hamas 
on the uh, 7th of October. So we're talking about a crossing which will allow trucks through. Uh, so this is, uh, 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 you'll have to go to Kogat for the precise location of where this crossing will be, but it's an important crossing for us because it will allow uh, more and more aid to get through to northern Gaza uh, to support people there. But of course, if you look at um, pictures of the markets in northern Gaza and of course uh, southern Gaza as well, you'll see a bustling, a bustling market scenes there. Food is getting through. Before this war, there are about 70 uh, food trucks, food trucks alone going into uh, Gaza. I told you that there were um, almost 400, almost, uh, sorry, almost 300 in the last 24 hours. And in the last four days, in the last four days, 1,500 uh, humanitarian aid trucks have gone in with food, with medicine, with shelter, uh, with, with everything that um, people need. So uh, the supplies are going in. The challenge, of course, is uh, looting and stealing by Hamas. Uh, if, you, if you see uh, the Reuters live lead, uh, the, the, the live feed of trucks going in uh, to Gaza, you'll see armed gunmen on top of those trucks. We know that trucks are being looted. Hamas are taking the food for themselves. Of course, I will never tire of saying that you can be sure that there are no hungry, there's no one hungry in Hamas. When we've apprehended them, when we've arrested them, we've seen no signs of hunger whatsoever, which means they take the food to themselves and they deliberately are trying to starve their people because they know that it will cause international pressure upon Israel. But it's not working. It is not working. We're trying to stop the food being looted by, by Hamas and get the food to as many people as needed. Next, Next question, question, please. There is a question from NPR. Yeah. According to Israel, there are 40 hostages who are over 50, women and children still alive being and women and children still alive being held in Gaza. Uh, thank you very much for that question from NPR. And you're asking me if the women and children, uh, women and children are still alive. Uh, that's your question. So I've already um, uh, dealt with this question. And needless to say, all 133 of our hostages need to come home right now. Sadly, some of them um, are no longer alive and they've been killed uh, by Hamas. But we know that dozens and dozens and dozens of them are still alive. That's our working assessment for the families. It's an absolutely horrendous horrendous experience uh, six months now six months be waiting for their for their loved ones to come to come home you know we are approaching the jewish festival of passover which celebrates the children of israel children of israel's uh, freedom from slavery uh, in egypt and the famous phrase said by moses was to let my people go and those words ring strongly in all Israelis uh, ears right now. We say very clearly, let my people go. This is a crime against humanity. These people need to be brought home right now. If there is any humanity in, in Hamas, which unfortunately we are long since past appealing to, if there is any humanity, we need to get these people home right now. The US has made clear that um, there is a very reasonable very reasonable offer on the table and it is Hamas which walks away every single time and we also know sadly that it is international pressure on Israel on Israel which emboldens Hamas which emboldens Hamas and 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 hardens their position um those people need to be brought home to their families as soon as possible next, next question, question please the next question is from AFP, and they ask, what news do you have of U.S. boats on their way to Gaza to build a pier to bring aid to Gaza? Thank you uh, for that question. Um, on the uh, pier, uh, there are a number of uh, proposals on the table right now. Uh, uh, Rear Admiral Daniel uh, Hagari from the IDF talked this morning about a floating pier uh, being built uh, right now. Um, I think if you want more details of that pier, then please refer to uh, Kogat, who will be able to share with you the details of that um, of that pier. And in addition, I would point you to his statement, which he made this morning, which was quite comprehensive, giving all the details of the efforts we are making to get aid into the people that need it the most. Next question, please. We have a second question from Hannah Julian, and she asks, 
Uh, Israel has asked the U.S. to send messages to Iran in an effort to ameliorate its intent to attack Israel, either from its, from its own territory or by a proxy. Has there been, has there been any response from Iran to these overtures? And if so, can you share what it was? Thank you for that question, uh, Hannah. Um, the Prime Minister this morning visited the Telnof uh, Air Base, uh, which operates F-15s, and he said, these are his words, and I quote, we are prepared for all scenarios in all sectors, defensively and offensively. Prime Minister went on to say that these are challenging times we're living in. We're in the midst of a war in Gaza, uh, which is continuing at full force, even as we are continuing our relentless efforts to return our hostages. However, we are prepared for all scenarios involving the challenges in all sectors. We have determined a very simple rule. Again, I'm quoting the Prime Minister here, and the Foreign Minister said the same thing yesterday. Whoever harms us, we will harm them. We are prepared to meet all the security needs of the State of Israel, both defensively and offensively, end quote. I hope that answers your question, uh, Hannah. Any Thank other you. questions? Thank, Thank you. There are no further questions. questions today. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the end of our briefing today. There'll be another briefing on uh, Monday. Thank you very much. Stay safe and um, speak to you soon. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dejobnik signing off.